Hi, welcome to my channel Mathematics Made Easy by Mary MJ. Today we are starting super revision for class 10. So first we will move on to the chapter real numbers. We will discuss all the previous year questions. First one, the largest number which divides 245 and 1029 leaving remainder 5 in each case is option A 16, B 12, C 8 and D 4. So how to find out the largest number which divides 245 and 1029 leaving remainder 5. So let us subtract uh, 5 the, uh, that is a remainder from each number in order to get their HCF. So that is 245 minus 5 that is equal to 240 and 1029 minus 5 that is 1024. Now we can find the HCF of this 240 and 1024. So uh, we have to start with the bigger one that is 1024. So 1024 can be written as 240 into 4 plus 64. And again we have to take this 240. 240 is equal to 64 into 3 plus 48. Again 64 can be taken to the side and 64 can be written in terms of 48 that is 48 into 1 plus 16. And again 48 can be written as 16 into 3 plus 0. So the largest number which divides 245 and 1029 uh, leaving remainder 5 in each case is 16. So the answer is option is A. Largest number which divides 245 and 1029 leaving remainder 5 is uh, rem uh, re uh, leaving remainder 5 in each case is 16. 16 is the answer. Now second one. If the HCF and LC, HCF of 65 and 117 is expressible in the form 65 m minus 117, then the value of m is. So we have to find what is the value of m. So first we'll go for uh, finding the HCF of what is the HCF of uh, 65 and 117. Take 117 can be written as 65 into 1 plus 52. And 65 can be written as 52 into 1 plus 13 and 52 is equal to 13 into 4 plus 0. So we can say that the HCF of 65 and 117 is 13. 13 is the HCF. HCF of 117 and 65 is 13. So so, 6, uh, 65 m minus 117 can be written as 13 or 65 m is equal to 117 plus 13 that is 130 or m is equal to 130 divided by 65 that is equal to 2. So, the option is A. Answer is A. Then, next one. Check whether x 6 raised to n can end with the digit 0 for any natural number n. So if any number ends with the digit 0 it should be divisible by 10. What is that? If any number ends with the digit 0 with the digit 0 it should be divisible by 10. It should be divisible by 10. Or in other words, what can we say? It should be divisible by either 2 and 5. No. Or in other words, it will be also, it will also be divisible by 2 divisible by 
2 and 5 as 10 can be written as 2 into 5 and we know the prime factorization of uh, 6 raised to n what is the prime factorization prime factorization of 6 raised to n is equal to 2 into 3 raised to n and it can be observed that 5 is not in the prime factorization here 5 is not there it is not there in the prime prime factorization of 6 raised to n hence for any value of 6 raised to n will not be divisible by 5 so we can write it as it can be observed these all steps are needed observe that 5 is not in the prime factorization factorization of 6 raised to n hence for any value of n for any value of n 6 raised to n will not be divisible by 5 therefore 6 raised to n cannot end with digit 0 for any natural number n therefore 6 raised to n cannot end with the digit 0 with the digit 0 for any natural number n so these steps are very very important okay now moving on to the next one state whether the following rational number will have a terminating decimal expansion or a non terminating decimal expansion and the uh, given rational number is 64 by 455 and this number 64 by 455 can be written as 64 divided by 455 is 5 into 7 into 13 here q is equal to 5 into 7 into 13 which is not of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m this is which is not of the form 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m so if it is uh, terminating then it should be in the in the form of 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m here we are not getting in that form so the rational number so the rational number 64 by 455 has a non terminating repeating decimal expansion now next one find the LCM and HCF of 336 and 54 and verify that LCM into HCF is equal to product of two numbers so we can find what is 336 how can we write this 336 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 7 that is 2 raised to 4 into 3 into 7 and 54 can be written as 2 into 3 into 3 into 3 that is 9 into 6 is 54 or that is 2 into 3 cube and what is HCF? HCF is equal to here common uh, in both it is 2 and out of 3, 3 cube and 3 here so 3 is common in both. So 2 into 3 is 6 is HCF and what about LCM? LCM here 2 raised to 4 here 3 raised to 3 maximum value we will be taking into 7 that is equal to 3024 is the LCM 
Now product of two numbers. We know that product of two numbers is equal to HCF, LCM into HCF. So we got what is HCF, what is LCM. Now we are finding out what is the product of two numbers. What is the product? Product of two numbers. 336 and 54 is equal to, if you are multiplying both, we are getting 18,144. And LCM into HCF is 3024 into 6 again we are getting it as 1800 18144 so it is verified lcm into hcf is equal to product of two numbers okay now next one use euclid's division algorithm to find the hcf of 4052 and 12576 so, according to Euclidean uh, Euclid's division algorithm, first we have to take the greater one that is 12,576 and write it as a multiple of 4,052. That is 4,052 into 3 plus 420. Now, take this 4,052 and we can write in terms of 420 that is 420 into 9 plus 272. Again, we have to take this 420 and write in terms of 272 that is 272 into 1 plus 148 again take this 272 and write in terms of 148 that is 140 uh, here 148 into 1 plus 1 uh, plus 24 plus 124 yeah then 124 can be written as sorry 148 can be written as here it is 148 148 is equal to 124 into 1 plus 24 again 124 can be written as 24 into 5 plus plus 4 then again 24 can be written as 4 into 6 plus 0 so, what is the HCF? HCF is 4. Therefore, HCF of 12,576 and 4,052 is equal to 4. Okay. Now, next question. Next one is explain why 3 into 5 into 7 plus 7 is a composite number why we are saying that this is a composite number uh, we can write this as 3 into 5 into 7 plus 7 that is equal to this is multiplying we are getting 105 plus 7 which is equal to 112 and the prime factors prime factors of 112 is equal to 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 7 that is 2 raised to 4 into 7 so we can write it as the product of prime factors 2 and 7 so if you are writing it as the product of two prime factors then it is a composite number so it is the product it is the product of prime factors 2 and 7 that is it has factors other than other than 1 and itself it is having more factors so, if it is um, multiple of many uh, many uh, prime factors, then it is composite number. So, it is having so many factors. Hence, it is a, therefore, it is a composite number. Now, 
then next one prove that one of every three consecutive uh, positive integers is divisible by 3 so what you have to prove here prove that one of three every three consecutive positive integers is divisible by 3 so let us take the three consecutive positive integers as n n plus 1 and n plus 2 since it is consecutive it is nearby so let the three consecutive positive integers integers b n n plus 1 and n plus 2 where n is any integer and by uh, euclidean's division lemma by euclid's division division lemma euclid's division lemma what we have a is equal to bq plus r where 0 less than or equal to r less than b for a is equal to n and b is equal to 3 we have if a is equal to n and b is equal to 3 we can write it as n is equal to 3q plus r equation number 1 where q is an integer where q is an integer and 0 less than or equal to r less than 3 that is 0 the, that's r can take either 0 1 or 2 now we can put r is equal to 0 r is equal to 0 then n is equal to 3 q that is n is divisible by 3 this means n is divisible by 3 n is divisible by 3 then what about n plus 1 at the same time n plus 1 is equal to 3 q plus 1 so what happens that means n is not divisible n is not divisible by not n n plus 1 is not divisible by 3 same way n plus 2 that is 3 q plus 2 so n plus 2 is not divisible by again 3 now we can put n, uh, n r is equal to 1 now we first we put r is equal to 0 then we are putting r is equal to 1 if r is equal to 1 we are getting n is equal to 3 q plus 1 that means n is not divisible n is not divisible n is not divisible by 3 then in n plus 1 if you are putting n plus 1 is equal to 3 q plus 2 and that means n plus 1 is not divisible by 3 then again n plus 2 so we are getting 3 q plus 3 that means uh, this is 3 into q plus 1 so what you are getting n plus 2 is divisible here it is a multiple no so n plus 2 is divisible by divisible by 3 then now we have to go for r is equal to 2 then n is equal to 3 q plus 2 again n is not divisible n is not divisible by 3 then n plus 1 is equal to 3 q plus 3 that means 3 into q plus 1 there n plus 1 then we can see that n plus 1 is divisible n plus 1 is divisible by 3 again if you are putting n plus 2 taking n plus 2 
and plus 2 means it is 3 q plus 4 so it is not divisible right so n plus 2 is not divisible not divisible by 3 thus for each value of r so in each cases we can see for each value of r that is between 0 and 3 only 1 out of n that is n n plus 1 or n plus 3 is divisible any one will be divisible by 3 thus for each value of r such that 0 less than or equal to r less than 3 only one out of n n plus 1 and n plus 2 is divisible by divisible by 3 so these are few of the important question which repeatedly asked in the previous years question question papers so try to do all these questions and in the coming videos we will be discussing all the chapters chapter wise maha revision is going on please do follow thank you for watching my video those who haven't subscribed please like share and subscribe and also click on the bell icon for more updates and notifications bye